In this video, I want to go through two example problems, how to calculate entropy in given situations. So let's look at the first problem. So this one is pretty involved, but it use, uses a lot of the intuition that we built up in the previous video uh, and the equation that we introduced for the second law of thermodynamics and how to calculate the entropy. So let's look at this problem. It says you have a one liter sample of hot water, 90 degrees Celsius, sitting open in a 25 degrees Celsius room. Eventually, the water cools to 25 degrees C while the temperature of the room remains unchanged. Calculate delta S for the surroundings for this process. Assuming the density of water is 1 gram per milliliter over this temperature range and that the heat capacity of water is constant over this temperature range and equal to 75.4 joules per Kelvin per mole, right? So there's a lot here, right? So we, we know that we're going to have uh, some sort of heat that's given off by the water, right? Think of the physical scenario that you're in. You've got a sample of hot water that's in a room temperature room. That means that heat is going to be flowing from your system, the water, to the surroundings, the room, right? So you're going to have a heat transfer from your hot water to the surroundings, right? And so we're going to have to calculate that heat transfer, and then use it to calculate the entropy change in our surroundings, right? So we know we're going to have to use our entropy equation, right? So we know that our equation for delta S of the surroundings, right? We know that that equation we saw in the previous video, delta S of the surroundings is going to be equal to negative delta H over the temperature. Right. So now here I want to go ahead and upfront make a few distinctions. Right. When we're talking about this delta H, this is the delta H for the system. In this example, our system is the hot water. Right. So we're going to be calculating the heat change in our hot water. The temperature in this case is the temperature of the surroundings. Right. The temperature of the room. Right. The 25 degrees Celsius for the room. So, uh, so knowing these, right, we have to do these calculations um, or consider these separately, right? So the first thing we want to do is calculate this delta H for the, uh, for the system, for our, for our hot water. So in order to do that, right, we're going to make a, a distinction here. We know that this process is happening at constant pressure, right, since it's just happening in a room. And we know that at constant pressure, the heat transfer is going to be equal to the enthalpy, right? So at constant pressure, right, we have the heat transfer is going to be equal to the change in heat, right? That is the, that, uh, the change in enthalpy. That's literally the definition of the enthalpy is the change in heat at constant pressure. So we can use the equation that we built up in the previous course in order to figure out the heat transfer. So that equation that I'm going to use here is the heat transfer. It's going to be equal to the number of moles of your substance times the molar heat capacity of your substance times delta T, right? So we were given a molar heat capacity here. We know that because it's per mole. Right. So this is some energy change per mole. So this is a molar heat capacity that we were given. So we can use that in order to calculate the um, in order to calculate the heat transfer here. So what I'm going to do is use the fact that we can use this equation and we know it's going to be equal to the enthalpy change. Plug this into the equation for the um, the enthalpy change, the entropy change of the surroundings. Right. So if we plug this in then we get that the delta S for the surroundings is going to be equal to negative number of moles of water times the heat capacity, molar heat capacity of water times delta T over the temperature of your surroundings, right? Okay, so there's a few things that we need here. We need the number of moles of water. Um, that's actually the only thing that we need, right? We need to calculate the number of moles of water. We've been given the molar heat capacity. We can calculate the difference in the room knowing that the water will eventually cool to the temperature of the room, right? So we know it's going to drop from 90 degrees C to 25 degrees C. So the only thing we have to establish here is how much water um, do we have, right? So 
Um, so we, we can use the fact that we're given uh, one liter, right, as our um, amount of volume of water and the density in order to calculate the number of moles, right? So the first thing we want to do is just convert that, uh, that liters to milliliters so that we can use it with this density, right? So I'm going to convert from liters to milliliters of our initial sample of water, right? So we have one liter. In order to convert from one liter to milliliters, we know that there's a thousand milliliters in one liter. So we'll go through that 1000 milliliters in one liter. So that means that we have 1000 milliliters of water, right? Now we can use the density of water to calculate the mass of water that we actually have. So we want to convert. So use density. to go from uh, milliliters to a mass, to grams, right? So we know we have a thousand milliliters of water and we know the density is one gram per milliliter. And so that's gonna give us a thousand grams, right? Now, if you're already familiar with doing these, then you probably could just do this. Notice a thousand grams without even going through these conversions. I just wanted to show it for the pedagogical purpose of it. So, uh, so now we know we have a thousand grams, right, of water. So how do we uh, figure out how many moles of water we have? We'll have to use the molar mass of water, right? So we'll use the molar mass of water. which for water, this is 18.02 uh, 18 grams per mole to convert, right? So we know we have 1,000 grams and in, we have 18.02 grams for every one mole of water, right? This many grams of water per one mole of water. And so that's going to give us 55.49 moles of water, right? So we know we have 55.49 moles of water. So what we can do now that we have this, we can plug it in to this equation in order to get our final result, right? We want to figure out the change in entropy of the surroundings. This was the only unknown that we had. Now we just can plug and solve. So if we plug everything in, right, then we get that delta S of the surroundings is going to be equal to negative 55.49 moles times the heat capacity here, which is the molar heat capacity, which is 75.4 joules per Kelvin per mole, right? times the uh, the temperature difference, right? So again, you want to make sure that everything is in Kelvin, right? So if we um, if we calculate this temperature difference, we're going to multiply by a temperature difference. So that's going to be 298 Kelvin minus 363 Kelvin when you convert both of those temperatures. So 363 is uh, 90 degrees Celsius converted to Kelvin and 298 is 25 degrees Celsius converted to Kelvin. So I ran out of space, so I just put it right there, but all of that is multiplied together in the numerator. And then in the denominator, we just have the temperature of our surroundings, which is gonna be 298 Kelvin, right? So when you solve all of that, when you plug everything in and get a final answer, that final answer for the delta S of your surroundings is going to be equal to positive 912.61 joules per Kelvin. Right, so we have an increase in our delta S of the surroundings, right? This makes sense when you think about things on a molecular level, right? If, you're, if you have some hot water that is releasing heat to the surroundings, right? That's increasing the thermal energy of the surroundings. You'll increase the activity of the molecules in the surroundings. And so that will increase their disorder, their randomness, right? So, um, so that increase in the transfer of thermal energy from the system to the surroundings will result in an increase in the entropy for your surroundings, right? 
Okay, cool. So that's the first example, right? Um, a few tips here. Uh, just one thing to point out. You want to make sure your units cancel out, right? Always want to check your units. So in this case, right, we get um, these guys cancel out, moles cancel out, Kelvin cancels out in the numerator here. And then so you're just left with joules per Kelvin, right? So you know you got the right uh, right result here. And keep in mind that this is a positive in the end because this is going to this whole expression is going to be negative because this um, 363 is greater than 298. It's going to give you a, a negative there, right? Okay, cool. So let's move on to the next example. So this next example says uh, ethane thiol is commonly added to natural gas to provide the rotten egg smell of a gas leak. The boiling point of ethane thiol is 35 degrees C and its enthalpy of vaporization is 27.5 kilojoules per mole. What is the entropy of vaporization for this substance? So this is a little bit different here, right? So all of this is dealing with the particular system of ethane thiol and it's referring to a phase change. When we are talking about phase change, things are slightly different. So if we're trying to calculate the entropy associated with the vaporization, which I'll just call delta S VAP for the entropy change for vaporization, this equation is just going to be the delta H of vaporization over the temperature of the phase change, right? So we, and when we're dealing with phase changes, we don't really have this difference between the system and the surroundings. We can just directly calculate the entropy change by taking this ratio of the enthalpy of vaporization over the temperature. So let's do it. This one's actually a little bit easier than the previous one. So again, I want to calculate, uh, convert the temperature from Celsius to Kelvin. So we have 35 degrees C plus 273.15. That gives you the temperature in Kelvin. So we got 308.15 Kelvin as our temperature. Now we just can plug everything into the formula. So delta S of vaporization is going to be equal to 27.5 kilojoules per mole over our uh, temperature of the phase change, which is just going to be 308.15 Kelvin. All right, so you plug everything in, you get 0 0.08924 kilojoules per mole per Kelvin. And so that's going to give you a molar entropy of vaporization. If we convert from joules, uh, from kilojoules to joules, then that gives us 89.24 joules per mole per Kelvin. Right? So this would be your en entropy of vaporization associated with this phase change in ethane, uh, ethane thiol, right? So this is positive. Right, so you get an increase in entropy, which makes sense uh, compared to what we talked about in the first video. If you're dealing with a phase change, vaporization, you're going from a liquid to a gas, right? So that's going to be a huge increase in entropy for this system, right? It's going from a relatively ordered uh, liquid substance to a relatively disordered gaseous phase. So that's going to be an increase in entropy. So it makes sense that the ent entropy of vaporization should be positive here. Okay, cool. So that's two examples of calculating entropy. So hopefully this gives you some good practice with understanding how to use these equations, how to calculate uh, entropy.